General Why don't we start? Uh, well, there's absolutely no doubt that um, the UK will do whatever the US wants. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you go back to the days of, we've had lots of prime ministers recently, but if you go back to the days of David Cameron, the idea then was uh, a golden era of relations with, yeah. between the UK and China. Well, that golden era is now long gone. Um, Britain caved in to American pressure over Huawei. Um, when I say caved in, I mean, that's a pejorative phrase. Um, and I think in the end, uh, probably the security people in the UK were happy uh, to have their arms twisted. Mm -hmm. But I mean, basically, the UK was, is always going to follow the US lead. And I think that is also true, essentially, of all the countries in NATO. I mean, the thing, if you look at the, the, uh, China, the People's Republic, and the USA, I mean, the fact is that um, you know, the US has lots of allies, but, the, but China has lots of trade partners. I was shocked the other day when Carl Bildt pointed out that, um, that there are only 20 countries in the UN who name the US as their number one trading partner. So that essentially that means you know, Canada, Mexico, a few Caribbean islands and so on. Whereas um, if you take the, the reverse, you take you know, who na how many countries name China as their lead uh, trading partner, it's at least 120. So if you w were to look at this sort of rivalry as a potential conflict, then you're tempted to use the phrase, you know, might is right. Well, how do you, f how do you define might? Is it economic uh, pressure, economic links, or is it military pressure, military links? I and mean, that maybe is something that we can get uh, involved in later. But I think the, the, is what lies behind your question, Douglas, is um, what, if, it come, if push comes to shove, which way will countries, what choice will countries make? Well, of course, none of the countries want to have that choice. And they want to avoid it. And I think common sense should indicate that the choice never has to be made. But that's what we're saying now with, you know, the benefit of common sense. You know, common sense doesn't always work. You look at, you know, you have First World War, Second World War, and so on. Um, I think that if you look around the world at the moment, if you take NATO out and say, okay, all the NATO members will follow an American lead. If you look at Africa, I mean, there are now something like 10,000 uh, Chinese firms operating in Africa. You've got the Chinese military base in Djibouti. You've got um, potential bases also. And I think China now is developing something like 50 different ports in Africa. That's not necessarily a bad thing. If you take the whole BRI initiative, which is obviously not just Africa, it's, it's Europe, it's Central Asia and so on, um, that really does bring real influence to bear. The downside of that, of course, is that you get a sort of debt imperialism if you take um, Sri Lanka, for example, um, there uh, the Rajapaksa government went into some dodgy deal and has suffered for it. Uh, but it means that the main port is now basically taken over by China. If you take uh, Greece, I was in Athens last week, I mean, Piraeus, one of the best ports in Europe, is now Chinese owned effectively and works very, very efficiently, very effectively. So one shouldn't. Um, see this in a Manichaean way. I mean, there are reasons why people, sh why countries should accept largesse from China. But the largesse also does come with some strings attached. I thought it's interesting that you know, Xi Jinping is maybe even now still in Saudi Arabia. I mean, they may be leaving tonight, I'm not sure when. Perhaps he's waiting for the soccer matches to finish in Qatar. But um, I mean, Xi Jinping is making good friends with Saudi Arabia and really with the whole Gulf Cooperation Council countries. Remember that Saudi Arabia has been a faithful American ally really since the foundation, 1932. So we're talking 90 years. Now that's all up for grabs. Um, I don't want to rabbit on too much, but I would think that you know, Africa really does not want to make this choice. And I don't think it really has to. Um, it can, be, it's, it can be independent. A much more difficult choice, I think, is in Southeast Asia and South Asia. I mean, Pakistan is, I think, really in hock to China 
thanks to the CPC, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. And if you take the countries of Southeast Asia, they all depend on China uh, for their, their trading links, their economic growth. The challenge will be over Taiwan and what may happen there. Uh, I'm actually fairly optimistic. I, think, um, I don't think Xi Jinping is a madman, um, nor, at, incidentally, do I think um, Vladimir Putin is a madman. But you can't really um, militate too much against what can happen when people make decisions which then lead to other consequences. Uh, I think we, I'm talking, when I say we, I sort of mean the West here. I think we were lulled into complacency in the era of Deng Xiaoping, and that carried on with Jiang Zemin and with Hu Jintao. Um, I think with, with Xi, it's a different ball game, and we don't really know how to assess him, how to treat him. And I think that means that the possibility of miscalculation does exist. A final thought, if there were um, a war, remember that American military really is battle-hardened. Um, so if there were a war between China and the States, regardless of who is on what side, I suspect uh, America would win. But that's sort of a catastrophic uh, concept, which I don't think is going to happen. Uh, but you know, one lesson I think that she has taken from the Ukraine war is that the American military and NATO in general, but especially the American military, is really very, very good. And I suspect that if you look at the Chinese military, even though it has invested an enormous amount into, into modernizing the military, the Navy is supposedly now bigger than America's Navy, nonetheless, it hasn't done, it doesn't have much battle experience. And what it's had has been pretty poor, for example, uh, in Vietnam. So let me leave it there. Well, thank you, John. I think I, there are a number of things I'd like to probe on that. Are, is China going to be everybody's leading trade partner forever? Um, is, is the uh, disposition of forces the way it, you've described it, or has it been changing? Is the debt policy of China uh, undergoing uh, various changes, as we heard this morning in other panels? <laughs>